So um, I'm Peggy Reyes um, from the Branson International Film Festival. And uh, we are so excited today to introduce you to uh, Ducon Williams and his cast and crew uh, for his uh, recent film project, Vincent's Vow. Um, it will be shown at our festival this year um, on, we're super excited to uh, reveal all of that to you if you've not had an opportunity to check that out yet. Um, I actually got a little sneak peek last night um, so that um, I can be prepared to talk to you guys today about the film project and uh, I thought it was great and super excited to be able to present that at our film festival April 22nd through the 24th in Branson, Missouri. So again, thank you team um, for being here and uh, just gonna, you know, have a little conversation with you guys, uh, maybe have a few laughs, hopefully, um, and talking <laughs> about the film um, with each of you. So I, I've only met um, Debbie in person. So the rest of you, hopefully I'll get to meet you real soon and uh, maybe you'll even come down and honor us with your presence. Um, for the film festival um, in April. So uh, just a few questions that I have written down and then if anyone wants to tell any funny stories, those are always good too. Um, so first off, I wanna say congratulations. Um, I see that last weekend you guys were at the Sunnyside Up um, Film Festival in Oklahoma and uh, won some awards there. So congratulations uh, to you, Dukon, and your team for Vincent's Festival. Thank you, Peggy. Really appreciate it. You're welcome. And so, um, can you just tell us a little bit about how this story came about? Yeah, absolutely. It, uh, I guess it was just a recognition that there was a lot of hatred in our world. And it just seemed like a lot of people wanted to blame it on so many different things. Um, you know, whether it was uh, male chauvinistic mentality or racism or, um, you, you know, just anything in politics, basically. Uh, and, and as I looked at it, I realized that we as humanity probably have a really hard time understanding what the word love actually means, yet we use it probably more than any other term. And it just got me questioning myself a lot. Okay, do I truly love my wife? Do I truly love my children? What exactly does it mean? And uh, I guess that recognition launched me into studying the subject. And I like to express through film. It's an art form that encapsulates all other art forms, I think. And uh, basically, Vincent's vow is just an expression of mine as to what I feel like the world is lacking in a narrative way. And that's where it came from. Awesome, that is, that's amazing. And I know that after people see it, um, they're going to get what you just said. Um, oh, so I, I thought it was done very well. So thank you for thank your you. Um, expression um, of love in, uh, in a different way than maybe we've um, thought about it. And I actually had a conversation with my 18-year-old daughter today about what really love is and, you know, what it looks like and, uh, you know, what it doesn't look like um, in, you know, her future. Awesome. So right along the lines of what you just said. So I have a question. Awesome. So there's a scene where I felt like I was watching an episode of Dancing with the Stars. You know what scene I'm talking about? <laughs> so I'm sitting there thinking. I hope so. <laughs> I'm sitting there thinking, wow, how long did it take you to learn that dance? Um, whew, that's a hard question to answer. <laughs> honestly, uh, honestly, Madeline and I only practiced it twice for wow. an hour at a time. Yeah, Madeline Grace, she's an incredibly talented actress. I knew she could dance, but I didn't know she knew ballroom dance. Um, I had taken some dance classes, you know, a few years previous, so I knew all the steps that I was looking for. And uh, the biggest thing was is just getting her up to speed, and she just took off with it. She picked That's up wonderful. on it really quick. So, so learning all the steps 
again, we only had practiced twice for an hour at a time before our day on set. So we had a good idea of what we were doing. And then it was just working with our brilliant camera guys and, and crew to capture, uh, make it, make the mistakes look less like mistakes. How about that? <laughs> well, it was honestly, I thought I was watching an episode of Dancing with the Stars. So it was very elegant, very <laughs> graceful. And uh, you did a really great job. So um, Deborah, Thank you. or Debbie, sorry, Debbie. Um, so your, your um, character, um, in this film um, is the mother um, of Dukon. Mm -hmm. So how, how did you prepare for that role um, with the scenarios that were going on in, in throughout the scenes of the movie? Um, well, it's actually kind of a two-part thing because I, I'm the mom, but I'm also the wife who's married and there's those things going on with that also. Right. So it, the actual um, worrying for your son, that, that was the easy part. Um, obviously he's went through things I've never went through as a mom with my son. So there was that, but there was the two sides. There was um, my character and her husband yes. and my character and her son. So dealing with those two things um, which, which made it a little bit more complicated because like I said, I've never went through those things with my own son. Right. Um, but the role itself, when I read the script, um, I would, couldn't have been more excited for the actual role that I got because it's a very complex role just because there's those two aspects of it. Yes. And, and you did a great job and obviously you were, you were rewarded for that um, at the film festival last weekend. So congratulations again on Thank that. You. Thank um, you. So at the end of the, um, the movie itself, um, there was a screen there that said it was dedicated to a few different people. Can you explain how those people, if they were affiliated in any way or how those people came to be honored in that film? Or is that too personal? I'm, I'm wondering if the question's for any of us or, or if you're asking the question to me or. Well, I just know that I saw three names at the end that the film was dedicated to. Yeah, um, in loving memory of. Yes. Yeah. One of them was John Dorsey. He was the husband of Jennifer Butel. She played the prosecutor in our film. Okay. And and we got to film some of our scenes at John Dorsey's house. And he was very supportive of us, uh, very kind to us. And he passed away during, during uh, post-production of the film. And another was uh, Ian Griffiths. He was 16 years old and uh, he lost his life as well during post-production. Well, a friend of mine is Griffiths. He, was, he did a little bit of our behind the scenes uh, photography and uh, that was a tough loss for them. And then the last one is Aaron Zitting. He is also a young man. He was 18 and uh, he had a very, very unfortunate accident where he lost his life as well. Oh, and goodness. while I'm talking about it, the reason why, why I had put those particular people in there, it's because the character of Evangeline is to deliver the idea to people that our loved ones, when they pass, they just pass, they're not gone. Right. They're just in a different realm and believe it or not, they can still influence us. And that was the idea behind the character of Evangeline. I don't want to spoil yes. the movie. Yes. What her role was. The idea is they still play a role in our life. And, and that's why uh, for John Dorsey, Ian Griffiths and Aaron Zitting, I believe they're still <laughs> very much alive. That's awesome. Yeah. Thank you for, for Thank sharing you. that. Really raw moment. Tag, Thank you. To tag on into that. To tag on into that. Um, yeah. If you, you, Peggy and Deborah, you've watched my film South of Swan Creek and Pushing Envelopes, and um, the actor David Barnett, David um, Barnett, who was in every one of my films, Audition One and Five, all of my films. He also um, passed away during post production. Yeah. 
thank you for mentioning that, Debbie. I just realized right as I got done that I, I didn't mention David Barnett. For some reason, I still feel like he's still here because it's so yeah. fresh. Just, yeah. Well, I actually thought you did that on purpose because you knew how he, he was in my, especially in my production. So I just thought you did that on purpose for me. So David Aww. Barnett's an incredible guy. He played our pastor in the, in the film. He performed the marriage ceremony and he was the guy doing the scene where, uh, uh, where he was given the seminar on marriage and divorce. Yes. Yes. Yeah. 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 Well, that's, that's great. And it's always good to know, you know, the backstories behind, you know, those mm -hmm. names and memory of. So um, thank you for sharing that um, with all of us. Um, I have a question for Mike. Yes. Hey, so you produced a lot of films. And how was Vincent's Vow different than the other ones that you have produced? How was it different? It was a lot quicker set up and prep than I'd like. Dukon had already spent quite a bit of time working on this and prepping the film quite a while before he came to us. I wasn't sure if we had enough time. We only had a couple of months before the shoot started. So I spoke to my producing partners, my wife Lily and son Madison. And then I slept on it and got up the next day and I had a feeling God told me to go ahead and help make this film. We had plenty of time. So I called Dukon the next day and said, we're in, let's do it. He said, really? And I said, yes, sir, let's go. That's amazing. So speaking of fast, how long um, did it take you all to, from you know start to finish as far as um, filming and putting it all together to get it to the product that it is right now? And anyone can answer that question. That's a Dukong question. <laughs> I, will, I will answer it like this. Mike thinks it was fast. It wasn't. Uh, it was fast on maybe the production side for sure. And, and the reason it was fast is largely because of Mike. Mike did a tremendous job, took a lot of weight off my shoulders and just made it made it streamlined so i appreciate that mike very much but but as far as like the whole thing from when i started scripting to where i finally decided okay the edits where i want it was three years wow yeah that's great well like i said the finished the finished product is great and I can't wait for everyone to see it. So Mary Jo, um, you did costuming for this um, production and um, tell us a little bit, you know, take us into your world um, as far as this goes for this production um, in costuming and um, working with the actors that you had. Um, this was a very big endeavor, really, for uh, costuming um, with 18 uh, story days and over 30 speaking parts. There's a lot of um, continuity involved in um, working through all those filming days, all of the different actors, um, actresses and things. Um, a lot of... Uh, a lot of fittings, a lot of um, tailoring, a lot of um, sourcing and structuring all the, um, to say all of the right things. Um, you know, there was um, uh, the wedding, a formal dance, mm -hmm. um, police officers, thugs, Romeo and Juliet on stage, just a lot of kind of um, I'm going to call them specialty sort of looks that were required um, as opposed to just street dress. Um, and that was uh, fun and challenging uh, to work all that out. Yeah, there was a lot of diversity in the scenes, like you said, from the wedding to the thugs to, you know, police officers and everyday clothing. So there was a lot of diversity, I feel like, um, in the film itself. Um, so, you know, great job. Um, her dress, um, what, what's the gal's, the actress name? Your sister, Evangeline. Dukon? Yeah. E Evangeline. Great. Yeah. In the film. So um, her dress that she wore um, 
and the the dance was just gorgeous. It was just gorgeous. And like I said, you know, at the beginning, it just looked so elegant and so beautiful. So that, you know, good job on the costuming on that. It, it was super fortuitous that um, I, I had access to um, Mike Strain's um, yeah. wardrobe, as well as a lot of things that I've sourced together over the years. And um, the fact that that was a soft pink to represent her um, youth and innocence and the way it spun under David Watson's camera cinematography, mm -hmm. it was a goosebump moment for me as well. Good, good. Well, see, so the thing that you guys all created as a watcher, it worked. So good oh, job. Okay. So speaking of David, so how do you feel about the finished product, David? Um, about, you know, from the win in at the beginning and then how it came out at the end. How are you feeling about this project? Uh, <clears throat> excuse me. I mean, I, I mean, really the first thought that comes to mind is just how proud I am of it. I mean, we, uh, I'd never done a feature film before, so it was definitely something new to me, but, um, but uh, seeing it on the big screen, I mean, obviously there's, Dukon knows there's little scenes and shots where I'm just like, oh. Gosh, wish we could do that again. <laughs> but uh, but overall, I mean, really, especially the last screening that we did for it, it looks so good. And I was really just like, man, we made a movie and there it is. And right. I mean, so many hands were in the, you know, that took part in it. But uh, but it was definitely it's definitely a blessing and something I'll never forget. And I mean, I've made all these cool friends and and uh, because of it and uh, lifelong friends for sure. So, but yeah. it was definitely something I, I'm proud of. And uh, I'm just thankful that Mike and Dukon gave me the shot to, to shoot it. So <laughs> I appreciate them for sure. Yes. And hopefully this is, you know, going to um, do well for you as well in the future, you know, with other projects. So definitely. yeah, definitely. definitely. Yeah. So the, just the experience alone. I mean, it's just, I learned so much on that film. It just, it's absolutely insane. So I had, like I said, never done a feature. So if without Mike and without our, our gaffer, Brad, um, I don't know if I would have, if I would have been able to pull it off. So it was, uh, but I learned so much from those guys alone, but uh, definitely is something that uh, everything I shoot from now on will have Vincent's vow will have its fingerprints on it. It's just stuff that I've learned just on that movie. So for sure. Right. Yeah. That's awesome. And you, you can only go up from here, right? That's right. That's right. Yeah. Sorry, Dugan. We started at the bottom with you, buddy. <laughs> no, no, that's, that's I'm totally joking. a compliment. I'm no, 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 no. <laughs> Dugan, Dugan knows I'm goosing him. He knows I'm Yeah. <laughs> well, and I think that, you know, with these projects, you know, being there together and like you said, David, the friendships that you form and the bonds that you form and, you know, learning experience for everybody you know, I've never been on that side, you know, so I've kind of, you know, hung out with Deborah a little bit and, you know, learned some things and watched some things. And, um, you know, it, it's great being around all of it. Um, I, I sing at church. That's about all I do. I was in theater in high school, you know, but that's great. Uh, that's, that's great. But that's about all I, all I do. Yeah. <laughs> I like to watch movies though. We're total movie watchers at my house. That's our, you know, form of entertainment. We love movies. So, you know, this film festival is right up my alley because I love awesome. movies. So, yeah. So I, awesome. I should have, I know Deborah is going to um, do some edits on this. So I'm going to kind of just go backwards because I should have did this at the beginning is have all of us introduce ourselves. And I'm sorry, I got nervous and didn't do that. So <laughs> he's gonna edit out all of this blah, blah, blah that I'm doing right now. And um, so let's go back to the beginning and I'm just gonna ask you all to introduce yourselves and then what you did for the project. Sound good? Good. Okay. Sounds Perfect. great. All right, so, um, so Dukon, just uh, tell us who you are and uh, what you did for this film project. Yeah, hi, I'm Dukon Williams. Um, I wrote, directed, produced, acted, edited, just did a bunch of stuff on Vincent's Val, and it was a wonderful journey. It was. So Mary Jo, yeah. tell us who you are and what you did for this project. 
Mary Jo Greer, and I did the costuming and wardrobe supervision for Vincent's Val. Amazing, thank you. And then how about you, Debbie? Uh, my name is Debbie Sutcliffe. I played Olivia Farnsworth in the film, the lead actor's mother. Um, so I was an actor in the film. All right, and how about you, David? Uh, I'm David Watson, and I was the uh, director of photography. Thank you. And then last but not least, we have Mike. Tell us who you are. I'm Epic Mike Strain. I was the lead PA in my film. Uh, no, I'm just I, um, I was one of the producers on the project, as well as its special effects, and just pretty much anything else I needed to do. Okay, so can everybody hear him, or is he garbled? He's really garbled to me. Sounded yes. garbled. Okay, so we're going to try something. Um, Deborah asked if everybody could mute themselves, and then I'm going to ask um, Mike the original question again so she can try and get that good on the tape, and then I'm going to ask you also to introduce yourself. So I'll do the intro first, and then I'll ask you the question about um, production. Okay, and then I'm okay. going to mute myself too after I ask the question. Let me find that button real quick, and then um, hopefully that will help. So, Mike, go ahead and introduce yourself. Sorry, I'm at one. I'm at one. Okay, I'm at FX Mike Strain. I was one of the producers on Business Bow, as well as all the uh, special effects and makeup, and uh, filled in wherever else we needed. Okay, De bad. Deborah, that didn't seem to help. So she's going to get a voice over for you. So if you guys want to go ahead and, um, so I'm not talking to myself. <laughs> All right, I'm at one of my, I'm at one of our church facilities working. So that's actually where I'm at right now. So yeah, well, that's okay. That's okay. Deborah said that she will just get a voiceover um, from you. Um, so okay. I am not tech savvy at all. So I don't really know how she would accomplish that. But hey, miracles happen, right? <laughs> and you That's guys are right. like, oh, no sweat. No problem. Yeah, she's got it. <laughs> I'll, fix, it in post. I'll fix I'll fix it in post. Fix yes. It in post. <laughs> <laughs> I'll fix it in post. <laughs> All right. Well, I just want to thank you guys so much um, for being um, on here with us today. I know um, your time is valuable. Um, and then um, I had one more question, if you don't mind. Is that okay? Yeah, yeah, sure. absolutely. Okay, perfect. Yeah. So um, I know that you have been at other film festivals um, with your project. But what is next for Vincent's Val? Oh boy, um, there's several things on the table. Basically, uh, we like to get it distributed for sure. Um, we've had a couple offers that didn't really benefit us. Uh, it is still in the festival circuit, so we haven't given anything to distributors quite yet. Um, but right now, we're kind of going into a phase that I call. Um, pay it forward and uh it's basically where if you want and you feel like the film can benefit then you can send us a little bit of money and we'll send you a link to give to them as a gift and we're hoping, we're hoping. to actually order some dvds and blu-rays with some of the funds there and and kind of just distribute until we get a big hitter that comes along and says hey we've got a deal for you awesome well, that's good. I, you know, we wish uh, me and Deborah on behalf of the Branson International Film Festival, you know, wish you all the best um, on this film project, because I think that it is a, a worthwhile um, project um, and a message um, that that is a good one and people need to hear. So um, I, I wish it well. Um, and then what's next for the future of Do More Films? Oh boy, do I get to say this publicly now? <laughs> um, I'm scripting a, a Western that addresses another issue 
um, in a narrative form, of course, so it doesn't come across as preachy. Um, and everybody you're talking to right now, uh -huh. I'm hoping is in it. I'm hoping they're involved because All I right. love this scene. We're, we're well, I, I want to be an extra. Hey, we, now that I know you sing in church, I'm I thinking I'll write a scene for you. How does that sound? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> it would be great to have you. <laughs> yeah, it would be a lot of fun. Well, thank you. Awesome. Well, thank you guys again so much. Um, um, from On behalf of the Branson International Film Festival, we thank you for your submission. Um, thank you for um, allowing us to share it um, with our audience, um, both virtually and in person. Um, again, that's April 22nd through the 24th. And uh, hopefully we'll get to see all of you or some of you there at our film festival this year.